Well, this week, Hurricane Barrel left a trail of destruction from the Caribbean into Canada. Damage in the U.S. is estimated in the billions, and hurricane season has just started. As Stephen Stock reports, taxpayers are paying a stiff price to protect coastal communities. Every four years or so on North Carolina's coast, Wrightsville Beach business owners like Jeff DeGroat have to put up with a construction project on the beach. This is a necessary program that, that has to be done in coastal communities for, for survival as well as safety. The median price on these properties, $1.8 million, an investment protected by this. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers pumps 100 dump trucks worth of sand an hour through a three-mile-long pipe working around the clock two and a half months at a project cost of about $15 million. The main disadvantage is cost, but the, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Travel just a few miles inland to Wilmington, where there's an affordable housing crisis, a shortage of some 28,000 rentals and homes. That's a lot of money to pump sand on the beach. Retired Air Force Specialist Willie Holmes has struggled to repair his home and shares a different perspective. It's just totally amazing that people would think that would be the best way to spend money when you got so much poverty around. Long Beach on Long Island, New York is an example of what can happen when there's no beach renourishment. After Superstorm Sandy destroyed more than a thousand homes here, the Corps renourished and built up the beach. What we found is that where you had a stable, well-maintained beach, berm, and dune system, the damages were extremely less than where you did not. To do that, total cost to taxpayers after Sandy, $111 million. And CBS News calculated that over the last century, federal taxpayers have funded more than 2,500 of these projects, costing more than $10 billion nationwide. From a public policy point of view, is this a good use of tax dollars? I would say no. Andy Coburn leads a team of scientists at Western Carolina University concerned about the policy. Who pays and who benefits? I would say there is inequitable distribution of benefits and costs. He sees two solutions. Beach property owners pay for the sand or strategic retreat, allowing some beaches to erode and homes to be lost. Why are we spending public money to protect somebody's private risky investment. Ultimately, Congress approves all of these projects, a cost critics say taxpayers shouldn't have to pay. Stephen Stock, CBS News, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina.